we are anchored here at Marshall Harbor and I think this is maybe also a good time to talk about anchorages and how you approach anchorage, how you select anchorage and when you get here what to look out for and how to basically drop your anchor and then we can have maybe a bonus of how we lift our anchors and also maybe thinking of how do you anchor in a current when a current and the wind is not in the same direction. Okay, so let's get started. There's a couple of things that you need to look at when you select the anchor spot. You see that yellow thing? That is our wind direction. I know the wind is coming now from the northwest. Um, we are at anchor, so I'm just going to use this as, a, as an illustration. So if we, if we want to select a spot, bigger picture is that we need to find lee, a lee shore on this side of any land mass. So we are over here, if you look at that specific anchor anchor point there, the wind, all the wind that's coming from this side, we will have protection for the wind like this. So that's the first thing that you need to look at. We know now the wind for the next few days is going to be from, from that side, and this is why we selected this point for our anchorage for this couple of days. So from 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 here we can see that we've got a lot of protection so the wind can even swing a little bit to the north and we still will have protection. Even this, this is all land mass, land mass over here that's going to make that the swells like here, if you look here, it doesn't get that big. Yesterday it was much a little bit stronger wind so it was, <laughs> it was pretty hectic but closer to the shore there is less little waves is bumping up and down that we're looking at is whether the waves will come around or the swells will come around the point the need is on the side for example you can see here's a very nice anchor anchor spot here and the wind will have a very good we will have protection for winds that's blowing in this direction however because of of the way the waves is the waves will go like this, but it will break and it will refracture or bend around the corner and it might eat us with a side swell. That means Sisu will just rock like this, or actually any boat will just rock. So I'm looking at the weather and we spoke about it now many times that the wind is coming from that direction, but we anchored in this way, close to the... Uh, uh, Johnny Depp's Island, but check this out. Why are we anchored here? <coughs> so we are this white dot. So that's where we are. Currently the wind is coming from this direction, but now look at the big picture. So and I'm just going to just start going basically hour by hour so now it's Saturday 11 o'clock 12 o'clock 3 1 o'clock 2 o'clock 3 o'clock 4 o'clock 5 now check this out check that out just like that so from ooh, if we go here the wind is blowing us now the wrong direction. And then it start turning like this. And this is basically nothing. This wind speed is 10 knots. And just like that. From nothing to that. And this is this 
Lucas front are just coming in. It's like amazing. Just going to eat a doof. And that's why we're trying to get prepared for tonight. And it's going to happen <laughs> at 12 o'clock. Between 12 and 1, we're going to change completely looking at the sunset to looking at sunrise in one hour's time. Making sure that, uh, that there's enough depth for you. <laughs> so, if you know the wind is going to come from that direction for the next couple of days, you can take the risk by having, like, we, we now are all the way to the back to have the depth, a lot of depth for us to swing like this. And maybe we, in front, we don't have much room to, to swing around the anchor. I never take that chance. I always make sure that I can swing all around because you never know. Sometimes the wind changes. Um, it's not predicted. Local wind is different. Maybe it comes around the corner and makes a little swirl and then because it's swirling you start swinging to a different direction. Or you, you're against like a mountain, the wind comes over the mountain, come from the back and hit you at the back and then pushes you to shore. So don't, for me, I feel much more comfortable making sure that the whole swing area that I have on my, on my chain, that I will have enough depth for, for Sisu to, to stay afloat. If it's just sand, I still don't do that. <laughs> so, but it did happen to us once that we didn't check for the low tide, which is another thing that you need to take into consideration. Check at the closest tide station, and if you're now at the low tide, then you know you can, you can anchor basically anywhere where your swing radius will be the same depth and it will just get deeper, you will just have deeper water. But if you're at high tide, then you won't, might touch ground and that's never a good feeling for a boat to stop floating. <laughs> it's like it's just on the rise. So look for tide stations. Here you can see it's a tide station. So we can just go and say tide station information and then you can see how the tide is. So now currently at low tide, so it means we can actually look at any place and we, if we anchor, we know we will go up. Uh, we will not go down and hit bottom well, a little bit. Now that is a different issue that you need to look at. So from this tide, you might think now that we are, um, say for example, three meters deep, but you lift up maybe five meters more and then you lose your scope. So make sure that if you do anchor at low tide, that you have enough scope for high tide. Another thing to look at is rocks. So, I mean, I've heard now lots of horror stories about uh, Raymarine or uh, Navionics, but we haven't yet discovered lots of bad, bad points. So if you want to go in there, for example, um, you can see there's a rock, so if you if you anchor on that spot, make sure that you don't eat that rock. Um, there's everywhere there's points of rocks. For example, this looks like a very cute bay to anchor in, but if there's many boats, you might be forced to get close to one of these rocks, and then you might eat those rocks. And this can be just a coral head. That little red dot can just be a coral head that rises by about two meters sometimes, maybe even more above the seabed. So if the seabed is saying like this one is 7.9 over there, it might go even, you think you have seven meters, but maybe you only have two meters because the coralette is very high. So be sure that if you do anchor, that there's enough space for you to, to swing and not eat any of these rocks. Some places shows you, you can anchor, but and the, you can also see there's now mooring, there's a lot of mooring balls or stuff like that. So many of the anchorages, especially if they are protected, they will actually start putting mooring balls down so that you will have mooring, um, that you need to moor and not anchor. And then there's places where you're not allowed to anchor. So you also look for those things. So if you see this little symbol, it says no anchorage there. You're not allowed to anchor. And it, it, sometimes it happens in parks. Or most of the time it will be in parks. Uh, another thing to look for is currents. 
So you can see there, here is a, here's an anchor spot, there's an anchor spot, there's an anchor spot. But if you can look carefully, you can see there's a cut. So the water will flow in and out of this cut. So it means this is the open Atlantic Ocean, basically. And if you look here, you can see all of this water need to drain. Low tide needs to run out from this area into the deeper sea. So everywhere where there's a cut, for, for example this one, the water will start to flow at a pretty big speed through there. Depends on how big the cut is and how accessible the cut for the water flow is. For example this one will surely have a lot of water coming in and out of here. So I, when the tide is rising the water will run in and when the tide is going down you will see the water will run out of, of these bays, which will cause a serious lot of, of current. So, like for instance, there is this no fishing, but if you would anchor here, you will swing every six hours up and down, up and down. So, not a good place like that. No anchorage there. Um, so, check out for those things. Navionics is very good in showing you what type of, of, of bottom it is. Um, you can also see, if you look at around you and you see beaches, you know, close to the beaches you will have sand. So that's always like gold, try to go for the sand. But like for instance over here, there's a lot of rocks or shoaling, shoaling, shoaling. Where there's a, basically a calcium layer or a dolomite layer. And a little bit of sand is on top of it, so that's not good anchorage. It looks, it will look like sand, but it's not sand. So check check for those things. Like for instance, there is now a couple of beaches, so we know here is sand. There's a beach, um, and we saw other boats here as well. And this is another thing to look out for. Other boats that are already anchored, and I I might find, I, I might have found some sand to anchor in. So look for, for the bottom tight. You might see that it says sand. That's a good one. Mud is good. Um, not not clay is, is better than 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 salt. Salt is the anchor will just float through the salty, muddy, mushy things and it will not it will not grab nicely. Some anchors is better at that. The modern anchors, they, they just keep on digging, digging deeper and deeper until it found some solid, solid ground and then stick to that. Um, but rocks generally is not a good idea. If it says R, not a good idea. Wheat or grass, it's a different anchor technique. You can anchor there, it's not a big issue, but most of the time people is too, too hasty. They, they drop the anchor and I start dragging the anchor before the anchor is actually the road is long enough to let the anchor set and then you just bunch up a lot of wheat and um, the anchor will never go down so you the anchor anchor will never set so wheat has a different technique um, you need to lay the chain out and let it slowly filter through to the bottom and then hit into the deeper either deeper grass or into the sand below the grass that's a different technique i try to anchor always like that as if i'm in on grass so i'm exercising that all the time here is a classic example of these anchor spots over there there and there oh and it's even recommended but we went in there it's just mooring balls everything is mooring balls there there's even in this little place here there's a lot of private mooring balls so the mooring balls took over the anchorage basically 100 percent so you if you see these things be careful that that and and don't bargain on that there's anchorage because we went in there and there was no anchorage and there was also no mooring balls for us left so we had to leave um so make sure that you that you look at those for those those signs oh <laughs> wait a minute what is scope? So what is the scope? The scope is the amount of chain that you bring out. And the amount of chain that you need to bring, I don't know what, what, what it is for, for rope. I have no idea. We only have chain. 
but you need to let this chain out for a certain distance and minimum absolute minimum it should be one two three which means for every one meter of depth that you have or vertical distance let, let's let, let's not talk depth um, I'll talk about it now for every vertical distance down you need to have three distances that way so if you're in three meters of water and your bow roller is one meter above the, the water then you actually are in four meters so that means it's four times three which is 12 meters and not nine meters many people forget about this and I see the three and I just put out three as a minimum so three times uh, three is nine and then I get into trouble and I start dragging the moment you get a little bit of weather or suspect weather or maybe swells it's going to like if you're too far away and the fetch is, is making big swells let out more the more chain you can let out the better if you're alone in the anchorage let it go it's always better to have too much chain out than have too little out so so one to seven means then which i normally do is one to seven so one to seven normally is if i'm in three meters of water like the bahamas most of the place is three to five meters so you're in three meters plus the bow roller that's four times seven and that is then 28 so i throw i throw a minimum 30 to 40 meters out but for a beginning you can put one two three out set the anchor make sure it sets and then you can let out the rest of the of the of the road so or the chain and that is then what the scope is <laughs> did you see did you see our new new, new shirts this is sisu there's a leopard and his little dolphins there yeah baby we're getting some merchandise sorted out i think peter is still working on all of this so we're going to have this on the annapolis boat show imagine that let me explain the reason why we need the longer scope because that might i think that will make much more sense then this is the anchor it goes like this and this is the shank if this is the shank and this is the the the, the fluke so the fluke is digging in into the sand and it's lying in like this the moment and the chain will then go from here and lay on the sand or on the bottom and then later on tilt up because of the weight of the chain so now that the this is the the good position if you don't have enough chain the chain will start going straight and that means this fluke or the shaft is lifting up and if the shaft lifting up your fluke is lifting out of the sand and this is what you don't want to do and also the same if you wanted to dig in the shank has to lie on the bottom of the of the of the sand or the mat or whatever the, the bottom type is and it will be like this and then this one will start digging in so if the shank is like this it doesn't dig in it will just it you will just make to make a plow and you don't want to plow so you want to anchor and this is <laughs> the big thing so the shank has to be down on the bottom if the shank is not on the bottom this will not dig in also the same if the shank is not on the bottom your fluke doesn't have any holding and it doesn't the direction of the fluke is they're not going deeper but actually going out so you have to be careful with the with the scope of of the chain so the chain part of the chain close to the anchor must lie on the bottom as the wind is picking up the chain is now the weight of the chain is now being used to straighten out the moment that chain is straightening out the shaft will then also lift up and then you lose your holding this is why it's very important to keep just that picture in mind of the weight of the chain is actually the thing that makes the anchor hook and if you don't get that then you're in trouble okay i think that's it it looks like we're already sitting at uh, 20 minutes of this video so i had to just break it up there's just so much information and i and i don't want to get you guys tired so we're going to stop this one here and then next time we continue on the practical side of anchoring <laughs>